What's up everyone, I am Michael Versperl, and today I'm going to be talking about how I created last week's Supermoon picture, so let's get into it. So recently I picked up a PC laptop so I could start testing out some other programs that are not made for Apple computers. Today I'm using PIPP, which stands for Planetary Imaging Preprocessor. I'm going to be using this software to help me eliminate shots of the moon that won't stack well before bringing those images into Photoshop. Before I do that, I am loading in about 800 photos of the moon that I took on a sky tracker into Lightroom. I was using my Nikon D7200 with a Tamron 150-600mm G2 lens. I shot the supermoon at 600mm, ISO 200, f9 at 640th a second. Now if you don't have a sky tracker, don't be discouraged. You could center the moon in the middle of your frame and take 10 to 20 shots and then readjust your composition and continue doing this until you have a decent amount of images to stack from. The reason we're doing this is not only to help reduce the noise when we stack the images, but we're also trying to get rid of a lot of images that were affected by atmospheric turbulence. And if you're not sure what that is, please look up astronomical seeing, which we'll explain in further detail. All right, we're gonna do some basic edits in Lightroom before we bring this over to PIPP. So the first thing that I would like to do is crop out a lot of this dead black space. Now, if you didn't use a sky tracker, just be careful that you don't crop too close to the moon because we are gonna copy and paste these settings onto all our images. So if the moon shifted positions you know, in each frame, then you just wanna make sure that you don't clip it. Next thing I wanna do is sharpen it a little bit and I want to get rid of the chromatic aberrations that tends to happen around the edge of the moon. Okay, that looks pretty good. I'm just gonna increase the vibrance and saturation a little bit as well. I'm not going to go too crazy here. I'd like to keep it more on the natural side. I know there's minerals on the moon, but um, you don't want to go overboard with your saturation and vibrance. And then I'm just going to tweak the white balance of hair. Now we just want to synchronize all these adjustments to all the photos. Okay, so the next thing you want to do is export all your images, preferably as TIFF files. Um, I am going to do JPEGs, and that's only because I am doing this recording, and uh, TIFF files are just so large, it'll take forever. All right, so we're going to open up PIPP and bring in our images. Before I proceed, just full disclosure, guys, I am still learning with PIPP, and if I make a mistake and forget to check something off, please let me know in the comment section below. I am all about trying to better myself and learn new programs, and um, yeah, I want to do more deep space objects in the future, so I definitely would like to get a better grasp of this software. So feel free to you know let me know if I miss something. All right, so we're gonna check off solar slash lunar full disk. Now the software is pretty simple, just go in order operation of the tabs. So in the input options, I left everything as it was. For processing options, I unchecked convert color to monochrome. For frame stabilization mode, I left it on object slash planetary. And then for enable cropping, I actually unchecked this because I cropped the images in Lightroom. Now under quality options, we want to make sure we enable quality estimation. and We want to reorder the frames in quality order. And I also want to check off only keep the best quality frames. Now from here you could either do the number of frames or you could do a percentage of frames to keep. I'm just going to do percentage of frames and make it 10%. That will leave me with around 80 photos that are the best quality. Now I don't want to do too many photos because the more I do, the I run the chance of it becoming a softer image. And it also could take a long time for Photoshop to stack you know, over 100 photos. So I'm trying to keep it under 100. So that's why I'll just do 10%. Animation option, we could skip over that. 
And for output options, I'm going to use TIFF files. And then here you could also rename the directory in which you want to save those files in. Once you're good with that, go to processing and hit the start processing button. Now it's going to run through all the images and give me the top 10% best quality images that I should use. All right, once that's done, it should create a folder with all your images in it. And here it is. And you can see the quality percentage rating underneath each photo. Now I'm gonna select all my photos and bring them back into Lightroom. And then once in Lightroom, I'll select them again and go to Edit In, Open as Layers in Photoshop. Once you have all your photos in Photoshop, select them, then go to Edit, Auto Align. Now this might take a decent amount of time depending on the number of photos that you're trying to auto align. Now once you're done with that, select all your photos again, go to Layer, Smart Objects, Convert to Smart Object. Alright, so now that we have a Smart Object, we're going to go to Layer, Smart Objects, Stack Mode, Mean. Again, this is going to take a little bit of time depending on the number of photos that you're stacking. So I'm going to speed this up. So it did a good job. It's a little hard to tell in Photoshop when I compare these two images, but I'm going to show you guys in Lightroom and um, you'll be able to see a bigger difference when I show you a single shot versus the stacked images. All right, so on the right is a single photo and on the left is the stacked images. And if we zoom in here, you can really see the difference. The one on the left is just so much sharper, cleaner. Uh, the clarity is amazing compared to a single photo on the right. And this is why I love stacking my images. Um, we could just really zoom in here and just see how awesome this came out. I'm just going to go around this whole moon just so you can see every every bit of detail. And the great thing about stacking is you can increase the resolution of your images right before you stack them if you wanted just to kind of, you know, get in a little bit tighter on that moon. So try that out as well. Okay, so before I finish this video, I just want to show you how I combine this super moon with a nice starry night sky. So I have my two images here. I took a picture of the night sky um, facing a different direction with the moon not in it. And I'm going to combine them together. So you want to edit your images in Photoshop. And what I want to do is bring my moon shot to the top layer. Next, I want to change it to lighten mode. You can also use screen as well, but we're going to stick with lighten. Next, you want to go to edit, free transform, and that way we could scale down the moon. It's a little big for this particular background, so um, we're going to make it a little bit smaller and just center it. And you can probably see some of the stars are shining through the moon, and that's because we're on lighten. So what we want to do is take black, and we're going to paint black on the star layer. This is going to hide those stars that were shining through the moon. Now make sure you're using a hard edge brush and you're getting as close as you can to the moon's edge. Once you're satisfied with that, create a new layer. And on this layer, select a white brush and make the hardness zero. You want to make the circle of the brush about the size of the moon and then just hit once or twice. And that's going to give us that glow. But now we need to hide that, um, that white light that's in the middle of the moon. So we're going to make the hardness of the brush a little higher and we're going to change it to black.
on a layer mask, you want to start painting away that harsh white light that's in the middle of the moon. And that's starting to look pretty good. And now we want to just adjust the opacity and kind of make it pretty subtle. You don't want to go too strong and make it you know, too unrealistic, but if you go out at night and you look at the moon, there tends to be a nice little glow around it, and that's what we're trying to mimic by doing this little technique. So give it a try and play around with different settings and just dial it into your liking. And that's it guys, I'm gonna leave it right there. You could always bring it back into Lightroom, do some further editing, but uh, it's pretty simple to do, so give it a try. Take it easy, bye-bye.